This video will demonstrate how to complete a risk assessment using the water load tool. Pressure ulcers are a potentially avoidable harm which can be averted following effective risk assessment followed by evidence-based preventative intervention. Broadly speaking, pressure ulcers are caused by three processes, mechanical deformation of cells, occlusion of vascular structures leading to ischemia, and shearing forces over tissues. When these processes occur, pressure ulcers may develop and appear clinically as one of the following grades. It is important to note Although the Waterloo score may help improve objectivity with risk assessment, it does not replace clinical judgment. Registered practitioners must always ensure to exercise clinical judgment when assessing patients and not rely solely on risk scores from clinical tools. Pressure ulcers are most likely to occur over bony areas, most often over the heels, sacrum, shoulders or elbows. However, any area of skin exposed to continuous pressure will eventually show signs of pressure ulceration. Risk factors for developing ulcers can be broadly split into two groups, intrinsic and extrinsic. Intrinsic factors are related to patient factors such as nutritional status, age, immobility and medical conditions such as diabetes or vascular disease. Extrinsic factors are related to external influences which may create risks such as shear forces if the patient slips down the bed, high moisture levels caused by incontinence or sweating, pressure due to prolonged periods of compression on soft tissue between bone and hard surfaces such as chairs or theatre tables. In order to evaluate whether a patient is at risk, we can use a validated risk assessment tool such as the Waterloo. The tool be can be completed via electronic systems such as Chameleon or on paper. The practitioner must assess the patient and calculate an overall score based on the risk factors present. First, BMI should be considered. High BMI can increase risks of pressure ulcers due to increased pressure over bony areas and the lack of blood supply in fatty tissues. Skin type should then be considered. This requires visual inspection of the skin. Older patients may have thinner skin which is more vulnerable to breakdown. Dry, flaky or clammy and sweaty skin may also break down more easily. If a pressure ulcer is already present, this indicates clearly that a patient is at risk of further pressure ulcers or potential deterioration of existing pressure ulcers. Next, gender and age are considered. Research suggests that women are at higher risk of pressure ulcers than men and this risk increases as age increases. Nutrition is a key risk factor. Research shows that malnourished patients are significantly more likely to develop pressure ulcers. Next, continence must be assessed. Maceration from urine and faeces can reduce the tensile strength of skin and increase the risk of pressure ulcers. Mobility is now assessed. Changes in mobility may lead to prolonged periods of pressure over bony areas, which can increase risks of pressure ulcers. Apathetic patients are those who rarely move. This may be due to physical or mental health conditions limiting mobility. Restricted patients are those who are restricted in mobility due to chronic disease, draining tubes, intravenous infusions or other medical devices. Special risks include cachexia. This is when patients are end of life and experiencing significant weight loss and muscle wasting. This may occur in late stages of diseases such as cancer, COPD or congestive heart failure. Multiple organ failure. This may include renal failure, heart failure or liver failure. Peripheral vascular disease. This should be documented in the medical notes. Anemia. If the patient is currently a smoker, regardless of the amount, then include this in the calculation. Neurological deficit may impact on mobility and pain perception. The relative risks of diabetes, multiple sclerosis and a history of cerebrovascular accident should be assessed using clinical judgment and assigned a score between 4 to 6. For example, if a patient has recently had a cerebrovascular accident and has restricted mobility because of this, then assign a higher score, for example 6. If it was a historical CVA, but the patient has normal mobility and sensation, then assign a lower score, for example 4. Note the maximum score for the neurological deficit field is 6. Next, consider if the patient has been in theatre. If the patient has had orthopaedic or spinal surgery, this increases the risk due to the pressure and shear forces associated with orthopaedic procedures such as hip replacements. Finally, calculate the total score and plan preventative interventions as appropriate. Patients who you judge clinically or using the water load tool to be at risk should have an acute pressure ulcer daily care plan started.